This project came about through a request made by the Beit HaTefutzot Museum of Tel Aviv, Israel to have someone go to Turkey and do a documentation of what remained of Jewish monuments in that country. And I had already had a working relationship with the Beit HaTefutzot Museum in that I had done a show of my Romanian Jewish photographs there in 1978. And so they knew my work, and they knew that I had a Turkish connection with being married to Aisha. So they thought I would be a good person to work on this project. Both my daughter and wife, in their own ways, opened many doors uh, within the Turkish community. When it started out, it was only intended to be a three-month project. It wasn't intended to be, be a film or even to be a document of contemporary Jewish life in Turkey, mainly that's found in the bigger cities, but to be a survey of all the places, the small towns throughout Turkey where Jews had lived over the past centuries and where for the most part there were just traces of those communities to be found. So the scope of the project changed from the outset uh, spending time both in Istanbul, getting to meet some members of the Jewish community there before starting out on the project, and in the course of doing the survey work, meeting small communities and small towns of Thrace in Izmir and elsewhere, and also thinking that if you just showed the monuments of the people, you wouldn't be really explaining what the what the life of that community was like today. So that was why I expanded the project to include uh, contemporary Jewish life. Many people liked the work I did. Some of the people that were in charge of things thought that I tried to show too much a picture of how people had been and not how they thought they really were, which to some extent is true because what attracted me, as I said earlier in the film, was the older style of life rather than showing how modern they were because in their modernity, in many respects, they're not very much different than anybody else who's a modern person in Turkey, except for their Jewish heritage and, you know, different religion. Well, the biggest population of Jews in Turkey are, of course, located in Istanbul and all throughout the city of Istanbul. And then the next largest place would be Izmir and after that Ankara. And then of the some 30 or so other small towns and places we visited, there'd either be a skeletal community, maybe five to 10, or in some cases just one Jewish person left. So it was very important to have a person fluent in Turkish working in the project because many places where we went, we found no Jewish people. And, and the only way you could learn about the community that had lived in all the various small towns, for example, like Chorlu, uh, Kirk Lareli, and other places was by locating Turkish people who had remembered them. Because already starting even before 1940 and going into the 1950s, there was an out-migration of Jews from small towns all over Turkey, first to Istanbul and, and later uh, when the State of Israel was established, uh, many of the poorer Jewish people from smaller towns went to Israel.
Many places where we went, we'd find an abandoned synagogue, a not very well kept uh, cemetery, even though there may still have been several Jewish families living in that city. And the question is, you know, why didn't they maintain these things? What generally we found was that when there was an interested group of people who wanted to, they could. For example, a very good example of that was Chinakali, where there were maybe, I'm not sure, eight families, maybe 12 to 14 Jewish people in 1985. Yet the synagogue was maintained. That was mainly because a man by the name of Mr. Cohen, who was a jeweler in the town, whose pictures I've made, would go and take care of the synagogue, maintain it. He had the key, he would lock it up. Other places, for example, in Mersin, where there was also still probably the same size Jewish community as existed in Chinakli, the synagogue had fallen into decay. 
and had been vandalized. Usually what would happen with no one to look after an old building, people would start taking pieces of it to, be, to recycle and to use in construction. And the same thing with cemeteries. You see this everywhere, not only of Jewish cemeteries, but all kinds of cemeteries, or even the old Greek monuments where the stones were then recycled or reused to construct houses or anything because people needed these materials and it's just an organic process of taking what existed and recycling it for another use. especially in the smaller towns, because they were so unused to seeing anybody come from the outside to inquire about their way of life. Our reception was really great. 